Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. The street vendor makes a bang bang sound. And all for a mere six, six real. Kim, a firefight something we should be prepared for? I hope not, he says, looking up from his browsing. Ooh. Leave for now. I'll come back when I can take another check because these things, unless I get some money from somewhere, um, these things are a bit too expensive. Right, so. We can't go in here, right? We can't play in this. And there's nothing there to mess with. So I, I've come to a dead end there. There is a way over this lock, however. If I recall. Oh, wait, hang on. It's here, but... Can I not... It's supposed to be a way over the lock, I thought. There's a ladder there. Ah, hang on, hang on. Is this it? Um, you've got Left 4 Dead 2 already? Dying Light has good parkour. Uh, I've never played Dying Light. All your friends have seven days to die, but I feel it's a dead game because it's always in alpha. Seven days to die. Is that the one where you build like a massive base and have to fight off wave after wave of zombies coming? Water lock control panel. Pull the lever up. Ooh, we opened it. Secret task complete. Close the water lock on Wednesday. Uh, you grab the handle and pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. Then it starts moving. Is that the bit we walk across then? Or has the bridge gone down? Okay. The lieutenant looks across the canal. We have a need to get to the coast and this is the way. But please contain your wanderlust for now. I don't want us to get sidetracked, not with everything that's going on. Focus on one thing, achieve it, then the next, he thinks. That's the task chain. We do need to go across there, though, because the tasks... Um, there, there are various things we just can't do. Yet. Track down your badge. Um, we can't do half of these. The smoke on the balcony... Uh, well, we can hang around. That just says visit the apartment. Excuse me. Sometime after 2100 to see if anyone's at home. Hmm. Seven Days to Die is the one that makes you punch trees to get wood. I hate I hate those sort of games where you punch rocks and trees. Uh, well, yeah, we need to go across here to get the signatures. So I don't know what um, what's up with Kim. But we do need to go across here, I'm sure. Oh, there's money on the floor. The radio delay hums with electricity. We can get down here, can we? Oh, what's this? Traffic beyond the gate. More abandoned motor lorries. Drugs. Thank you very much. And some sunglasses. Jamrock. Biker cop sunnies. Take all. Empathy gained, logic lost. They'll be useful. The sign says no entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. Who just leaves their sunglasses lying around? Dead Space 2. You have Dead Space 1 on, on Humble Bundle account. Um, that's pretty good, I think, Dead Space 2. Again, not played it. Uh, you enjoyed Dead Island more than Left 4 Dead? I have a friend who played Dead Island and, and yeah, again, similar thing. Really enjoyed it, apparently. I haven't played it myself. Oh, we need to put the bag of goodness into my hand. Oh, oh I'm after picking up trash for cash. Trash for cash. Sounds like some terrible political campaign. Someone has broken down the fence and the barbed wire. Does this show where we, we are, roughly? We've gone across here. Fisherman shacks. Oh, there's a church and other things. Uh, let's have a wander across here. I mean, this is just a tip. There's something to see over there, and there's a wrecked something over there we can go and check out. Footprints in the snow. They lead away from the accident. This accident? Seems the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Oh, hang on. Is this my police car? I hope this isn't my police car. T 
take a banged up fuel canister. What's this car then? It looks trash. Sunken motor carriage. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insel Indian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels and the engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water. The seawater has already started to corrode the metalworks. Remember the tyre tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. Well, I was just talking about those tyre tracks earlier and what they uh, led up to. So that was right. The, the, whatever the truck was, it sped away from the scene of the hanging. And this is it, we think. This is where the tracks on the plaza were leading to. It appears to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. Find the traffic hooligan. I agree, the lieutenant replies. His eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Run your hand over the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched it. What's the make of this uh, motor carriage? Uh, can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it, make it out. But you do see a monkfish float by. Okay. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the cold water. My guess it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. I think I turned up on Sunday. I think. Hello, Hangmanine. Welcome back. How's the story time? <laughs> it's going well. Definitely telling a story. Not sure where it's going yet. Hey, I'm back, guys. Welcome back. You saw the reviews on this game on Steam. Looks interesting. Everywhere I have seen it reviewed, talked about, discussed, videoed, anything like that, it's, it's all just received huge uh, positive remarks and comments. Uh, great critical acclaim. Everyone says it's fantastic. Um, the more I play it, the more I enjoy it. And the more I find the story is well developed. It's really good. It's a slow starter one, again. Um, I was sort of struggling with it after about four hours or so. But yeah, it's good. And it's definitely interesting. There's a lot to this. Anyway, how are you guys doing? Let's see where this goes. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Didn't I arrive on Sunday? What should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket, a joyrider jacket, maybe a police badge. How long will it take for the tide to come in? I don't know, an hour or two tops. Sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede. Well, I didn't have a huge amount of else to do for two hours, so I don't see that it's adjusted the time an awful lot. Yeah, luckily I, I enjoy reading quite a bit. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Doesn't this look cute? Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above the sky, echoing like distant laughter, ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. 72% uh, <laughs> to whistle a tune. Hold on, it looks very blue, point to the sunken vehicle. Yes, yes it does, almost, like police blue. What's your favourite blue thing? Hmm, the lieutenant is staring at the wreck, let me think about it. This is my car, this is a police car, isn't it? Whistle a tune, 72%. Success. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. Oh, killed morale, nice. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Okay, Indigo, enjoy those snacks. See you later. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and a sunken car. The wind blows. In the distance, behind the church, some vagrants are having an argument over a bag of tarry they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls lands. The clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. 
Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. Um, would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Let's talk about the tide. It sure is taking its sweet time. I believe it's following a pattern set millions of years ago by cosmic forces. But I suppose it could move quicker, yes. Clouds on the horizon grow darker and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. 30 minutes pass. If you have to side with either of the strikers of the shipping company, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organisation and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. Hmm. But if someone puts a gun to your head, your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. 30 more minutes pass. Hang on, that looks... Is that tide going down or is that getting frozen up in the ice? Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Cupris Model 40. <laughs> His eyes turn to you. It's my car, isn't it? Yes, why haven't you? It's a simple and rugged machine favoured by working men, government offices, he pauses to think, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Squint your eyes and say, is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? Precinct 41, perhaps? Does he know something about the driver of this vehicle? <laughs> um, oh, God. Oh, God, no. Here it is. Oh, God, no. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. 41, Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach and the most terrible feeling comes over you. Oh, God, Harry. Oh, God, Harry, what did you do? My car was stolen. I was unconscious in a hotel room. I can't have crashed my car here. Nope, just no. Nope. Say no to this, Harry. Oh, God, it's fine. I drive my I drove my car to the sea. I'm afraid, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle into the sea right here. Hmm. Um... Things were going so well, we were just whistling merrily. You can still whistle, Lieutenant says with a smile. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. I think my car was stolen. I'm going with this. I, I, I am sticking to that story. I mean, it makes sense, right? Maybe I was in pursuit of someone? Of whom? Lieutenant looks sceptical. I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Probably? Try definitely. The badge, the gun, and now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There is also a fourth thing you lost. I don't want to hear about that. A fourth thing. More precious than the gun, the badge and the motor carriage combined. Lost forever into the deepest of seas. Hmm. Yes, my dignity, it's gone. Uh, how do we get it out? Detective, he says almost gently, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. I can still fix it. That is very unlikely, Lieutenant replies with a sigh. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there, he shakes his head. In a few months, there'll be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real, but in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. People are going to ang be angry at me, aren't they, in Precinct 41? Let's face it, this is a substantial loss to your district's budget. He's avoiding your gaze now. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my Kinema. Oh dear, I've lost a quarter of the police force's motor transport. Uh, this was 20% of the station's vehicular budget. Uh, well, at least I can see what's in there now. I still don't think it was me driving that. Because I don't think if I was as drunk, that drunk, I would have got out of the sea. I really don't. So we found the traffic hooligan. <laughs> Go to your inventory and interact with the item by clicking on the interact tab. What have we got? We've got... 
A white envelope. Oh, I was supposed to look at this. This is from Everart earlier. Interact. You take the uh, legal documents out of the envelope. A 12, 40 month construction, a 12 to 40 month construction period and a zoning plan in the addendum. Look at the zoning plan. The youth centre cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three storeys tall. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings. Almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth centre. This is either ominous or cool architectural choice. Hard to say. My money is on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. Hmm. Oh dear, I've been convinced that it's a good idea and it's cool. That's going against my logic trying to find a hole in this. Um, I can't change the gear. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine, Lieutenant replies, flipping through the documents. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution. But, he shrugs, try to find a loophole in the deal. Success. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access and for the next 12 to 40 months their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. That looks grim. Uh, wait, what are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. I see. So this is this is really uh, a method of getting people to give up their property. Yeah, this is standard shakedown of tenants thing, isn't it? Well, not tenants because they own the property, but uh, you you know what I mean. Okay, look, Kim, the people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? I should have seen it. Lieutenant frowns. He reads over the document again. Yes, yes, you should. Everhart probably has eyes on us, but he pauses to think. We could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. Okay, let's do this. Commence the forgery. Everhart's people could be watching you here. Let's not do it here, then. It cannot be retried. Put the documents back in the envelope and leave. Interesting. Uh, we need to think about that at some point. Okay, hang on. There's a bottle over there. Let's go and get that. What was I drinking? A bottle drained of all its booze, frozen to the ice. This is it. The scene of the party. A fire pit, cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. Hold up. Don't you mean the scene of the crime? Not as such. I'm talking about what came after. The party scene. Sure does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point. Like a goose, ice sculpture, or a chocolate fountain. Hey Kim, looks like we have had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. Um, this was like some kind of theatre to them. A circus production by a great clown. Lieutenant adjusts his glasses and nods. Hey, let's keep moving, Detective. Unfortunately, I'm the climb. But, whoa, 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 over there. Oh, the ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. Don't fall into the ice. In fact, let's quick save this. We've got a police badge. Nice. And a proper commander's jacket. Nice. I'm putting that on. This one gives me Esprit de Corps and Shivers. This one gives me Esprit de Corps and Visual Calculus. I like the idea of Visual Calculus. And now I look more, more like the part that I'm supposed to be. Empathy at minus one logic. I like logic. Empathy. They do look better. Let's go with that. I'll take the I'll take the penalty. To logic. I need to sell some of these clothes as well, by the way. There are some garbage ones I'm sure that I don't need anymore. Oh, we need to interact. We surely need to interact with that badge. Yes, I thought we would. Thick blue piece, piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare back at you. A younger version of you already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. 
A police badge on which you see a photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to its back. I found my badge. Track down your badge. Excellent. At least something good came out of all this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. Study the badge. Encased between two plastic, durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green grey eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. But how old? Eight, maybe ten years? The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking. Why? Why do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression. Although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Dubois. Harrier Dubois? Harrier, that's long for Harry. So you are Harry, he thinks. Everard was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Interesting. Um, wait, what kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name, revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. I like Ironhide. I think that would be a better name for me. A name like Armour. Okay. Harrier Dubois it is then. I've accepted my name. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information. Rank. There's that LTN Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant Double Double Euphrater? What? What is a Lieutenant Double Euphrater? <laughs> Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I'm a Lieutenant. And Double Euphrater? The title of Euphrater. This is a weird word. I don't know. This must be made up just for this game. Is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain, the Lieutenant explains, you've declined twice. Thus, you're double your freighter. Is that like, um, it's like a seniority thing, I guess? It's odd that it would be added to your rank if it wasn't seniority. If it was a mark of like, uh, well, I guess someone who's refused more responsibility. Declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's decomptage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, lieutenant. What's a decomptage? Decomptage is a hierarchical system employed by the Rivershall Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. I wish I had asked. The countdown is modelled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Euphrater rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. That's what I want to know. So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you're doing good police work. I like that. I, I do indeed like that. Hey, welcome back, Indigo. What food did you get, by the way? We need a food talk today. I guess we've already talked about chocolate, but... Uh, it matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. He smiles encouragingly. And now we've even found your badge. He trusts you, for now. Try not to spoil it. Uh, we'll not talk about my rank being drunk. <laughs> cereal. That's just a serial number. Reva Shoal, Jamrock, Precinct 41. With some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Date of issue. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. Uh, the case created a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. What? 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 Just a Twix? Oh, Twix. I like Twix. Twix are good. But not the white chocolate Twix. White chocolate Twix are sickly sweet things, and I can't do those. But regular Twix is really nice. 
Uh, a lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you. Of that, you are sure. Precinct 41. Yes, it's a designation of your precinct, 41. Uh, it's a tough station to work in. But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be like it must be an honour and a curse to work with people like Price McCoy, Birdie Vera, Roberts, Fowerback, Demetri. Suddenly names from your decomptage flash back in your forebrain. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. They must be big. I told you, I'm a superstar detective. You haven't heard of white chocolate Twix? Yeah, give it a miss. Maybe it's a UK thing. I know they don't always release all, all these variations on the bars everywhere, but um, yeah, it's not good. You had a passion fruit cheesecake today? That was one of the best things I've had. That sounds really nice. I had some like, uh, it wasn't passion fruit cheesecake, but it was like a passion fruit. It was a similar thing. It was like a mousse, passion fruit mousse on some sort of biscuity base. So not dissimilar from a cheesecake, but I had some of that in Spain. And that was nice. Uh, okay, put the badge away. Excellent, we got a badge. We're a proper copper now. Right, I'm somewhere. I'm in the ice there. I think that's where I am. We can go and have a look at the fisherman's shacks while we're here. Is there anything over on the ice to play with? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quick save that. In case the ice crumbles beneath my feet and I die. I'm not going through all that uh, discussion again. Hang on, I've got a thought here. Uh, I didn't like the indirect modes of taxation very much. The finger pistols. I quite like this one. You were promised a gun, that much is certain. This is why you became a cop. Yet here you are, loitering around with idle hands like some sorry-ass loser from the street. Suddenly, you're supposed to be solving cases by, what, like, talking to people? How are they going to believe that you can protect yourself and them from savages without a firearm? This ain't right. You need to think around this problem, and you need to snap your fingers at people as you do. Um, I, right, so that's like a massive penalty to savoir faire, which mine, is, mine sucks at the moment anyway. But when I research it, it might be something really good. Let's do it. Let's unlock. One of these. Confirm. And let's internalize this thought and see what happens. I don't use savoir faire a lot anyway. <laughs> so let's see what, what this what comes of this one. This should be funny. You only have the regular milk chocolate Twix? Best type of Twix. Definitely the best type of Twix. Uh, we've found a boat. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. I did have... A sort of a, an image in my mind about um, some woman towering a boat earlier, I think. There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Oh. Great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Wait. What would I be doing under there? I don't know. Sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Great news. I found somewhere to sleep. Huh? I said great news. I found somewhere to sleep under the boat. It'll be free. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. <laughs> Sleeping under a boat? Sounds good to me. It sounds cheap, which is what matters. You have those white lions. Wait, are you saying you've got white lion bars? I've, I've never seen a white lion bar. I don't know that I want it. I mean, I like lion bars, but I don't know if I want the white one. Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. In here. We need to be in here. There's music in here. There's, where do I go? What? Okay. I didn't expect to go around this way. Ah, uh, okay. We can go in through the gate. That's fine. Through the hole. Really? White lion bars? Anyone else seen those in the UK? I don't remember those. Maybe I just missed out. Well, the last thing I need at the moment is more chocolate. The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? In this yard? The lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of grey swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago it was abandoned. Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. So what's a block obscure? 
A black block, a part of the city left unrenovated after the war, or one that has fallen to gang violence, or has become an inspitable some another way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence their name. So this part of the coast is a block obscure? Practically. It's not an official term in any way, but he spreads his arms. Look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. Maybe they left something useful behind. Yes, for you to pick up as part of the Jamrock Shuffle, he gives you a weary smile. <laughs>